We are at the Slessy Creek property on Glacier Creek. You can see the, the mountains got some snow up there. We are about 350 meters up this creek, about five hours into our hike today. And uh, we're just stopping to hammer a few float samples because everything's mineralized. Pyrite, some calco pyrite. Nice samples from float, and there's hundreds of these that we found. We're also finding some limestone, and we're also finding quartz. And the quartz also has disseminated pyrite and calcopyrite. Look at these samples. Mineralization all throughout. It looks like it's following all the quartz stringers cutting through as well as disseminated. Lots of samples all over the place. See all the pyrite all throughout. Minor calcopyrite. You can see how mineralized a lot of these samples are. Mineralization cutting all throughout. Look, here's another one. There's tons of these samples all over the place. All right, about 400 meters, 450 meters up Glacier Creek. Look at this. So this is Glacier Creek, branches off two ways. We don't know how far we're gonna get. We're trying to get as close as we can. We gotta be back down to the bottom of this by the time it's dark, and we're gonna have to do the last uh, four hours in the dark on the way out. Over there is the US border, it cuts across there and uh, we're on the Canadian side about a kilometer away. Lots of bedrock exposed but also very steep up there. Another sample here you can see the pyrite and calcopyrite. So this is what we originally wanted to get to. You can see in the center right there there's a giant vein cutting across and I'll zoom in a bit. The entire area has oxidation all throughout it. There's a second parallel vein above. It's about 100 meters off the ground. I don't think we're gonna get there, but there's like crazy amounts of oxidation on this side. And we're gonna try and get as close as we can. And if not, we'll get a bunch of float samples along the way. So this right here is actually Canyon Creek. The whole mountain up here, all the way going over to that one, and the one over, it's all heavily oxidized. And that's where we're finding all those massive sulfide samples along that creek. We flew a drone up and we found a huge area about a kilometer tall and about 300 meters wide with heavy oxidation finding boulders of massive sulfides in there. Not a few, hundreds if not thousands. We are on the other side now. The creek widens here. The reason why is because you have another creek here. Branches off two directions. A couple things I'm seeing. Limestone. Also, mineralization.
Look at how far up we've made it so far. This is a giant chunk of snow and usually in the summertime this is a big snow cavern over top of this. You can see it from the other side of the mountain. We're gonna go see what we can find. Bit too sketchy to get up there, but we will look around for some float and maybe traverse around here, try not to fall through this snow cavern. See all the snow here. It's about 15, 20 meters tall from the peak down to the bottom over there. Below the ice cavern, we have a rock contact right here you can see along here. This is a very silicous rock and looks like an intrusive, but you have your classic sedimentary rock down below with some quartz veining. We're finding lots of samples of float with little bits of pyrite, little bits of sulfides. So we're taking a few float samples with us. We can get about 50 meters farther and that's it. It's a little too sketchy up there. What I'm noticing though is quite a bit of limestone, but I don't see any limestone bedrock anywhere. So these are the samples that we're finding. You can see sulfides. All through the quartz, as well as into the post rock a little bit. Definitely some nice sulfides. So we got our first bedrock sample from up there. Running down through here, there's quartz. We can't get to that quartz vein that cuts across here. It's just uh, impossible to get up there hiking this way. We could potentially go around, but we don't have much time. We have to get back down to the old logging road one kilometer down before the sun sets on us and we have about an hour. So we are going to hike down now. You can see right there, heavy oxidation on that exposure of outcrop there. Entire mountain up there. So we're at the branch off of the two creeks, the branch off glacier. We found samples up here with mineralization and we found samples up here. So there's mineralization in both creeks. The dividing line for the Canada-US border is almost where that snow line is. On the other side of this you have some old workings in the Canada side and on the other side of that mountain you have some workings on the US side. The Red Mountain Foundry Mine. So, on our way down. Making our way down now and you see loads and loads of samples like this. Looks like it comes from both directions of the creek, both branches. But there's actually quite a bit more mineralized samples lower down here where everything's kind of concentrated and narrowed. And this is what I mean by lots of nice samples everywhere. Take a look at that. Very nicely mineralized. And not 30 centimeters away, you have more mineralized rock. It's already starting to get dark on us. It's 
We're about 200 meters away from the bottom of this creek and then it's a few hour hike out in the dark. And this is what Slussy Creek looks like at 6 o'clock in the evening and that is a desperate man looking for a drink. Runs out of water, comes unprepared. We got uh, about an hour and a half left to get out of here. And 7.30 p.m. That is Slussy Creek down there. We conclude our trip. We are several hundred meters away from the truck only. And that's the day. Hope everyone enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the next one.